Welcome my dear old friends, new subscribers, and a special shout out to those of you doing the night shift. Yes, those long monotonous hours during the night really can drag on. Well, you know what? I'm here for you guys. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of series recently, and I don't know about you, but I've got series fatigue. So, definitely about time I did a couple of standalone stories. And what better way to start than that one that I've got for you tonight? Oh my god. I'm telling you now, you're going to have a strong opinion about the protagonist in this one. And you know what? I want to hear all about it in the comments section below the vid. Now, sit back and relax with your favorite drink, my dear friends. Because it's time to listen. After reading this, you're probably all going to hate me. But I really don't care what you think. It doesn't matter anymore. Nothing matters, except that I tell the truth. And the truth is, by the time you read this, I must probably be dead. So, you know what? Fuck you all from the other side. I was an internet troll for almost five years. And by troll, I don't just mean some kid with an axe to grind, trolling YouTube videos and trying to pick a fight. I mean I was literally... Evil personified. I lived for one thing. To bring unmitigated misery to my fellow human beings. And this is my story. When my mother died in 2012, she left me a sizable inheritance, God bless her. Which meant I was fortunate enough to quit my job. To not have to work anymore. And that suited me just fine. I'm a loner by nature. I used to work in shipping, and even though my job was pretty isolated, I still found the infrequent contact with other people distasteful. Something I try to avoid at all costs. I was bullied as a child, which left me with a deeply ingrained suspicion of people. And over the years, that suspicion slowly solidified into an abiding, all-consuming hatred. After I quit my job, I found myself going out less and less. These days, technology makes it easier to adopt a reclusive lifestyle. There's no need to leave the comfort of my house when everything I need can be delivered to my door. So, I converted one of the spare rooms upstairs into an office, and proceeded to live a life almost exclusively online. Slowly, but surely, I became addicted to trolling. I don't know where it began. A few arguments on Reddit, a couple of rants on YouTube, and suddenly I was hooked. I'd spent hours engaged in arguments with people I didn't know, supporting ideologies I didn't really care about. I didn't give a shit about anything, just so long as I could get in someone's face. Just so long as I could get a rise out of them. Yeah, you probably know my type. I'm the guy who uses Reddit to post photos of car accidents, executions, natural disasters, and then uses the comments section to mock the victims. Not because I give a fuck about the victims one way or another, but just so I can lure some idiot into a frack. An argument. And believe me, there are enough idiots out there willing to switch on their <laughs> outrage at a moment's notice. All you've got to do is press the right button, and away they go. I feed on them. I gobble up their angle like a shark gobbles up little fish. And all the while I'm egging them on, jabbing at them with little hooks and barbs. And the more I poke, the angrier they get. I've had people threatening to blow my brains out. <laughs> I've had people wishing I got cancer and died screaming. Jesus, all that pent-up rage. And I just soak it up like a dry sponge. I could say it's better than sex, but I wouldn't really know. My addiction to trolling grew stronger by the week. It's hard to explain, but I guess it's like any other habit. At first you smoke the drug, then, after a while, the drugs start smoking you. 
It's the only thing that gives you happiness. The one thing that gives you relief from the constant pain. And you convince yourself you're in control. That you can quit any time you like. But then, as the months pass, you begin to realize you might have a problem. That maybe you're in deeper than you intended. I'd scour the internet, looking for a hit. I had a bevy of usernames. Danger Mouse 52 Prank Your Mama. Knob76. <laughs> Hungry Harold. Lucifer Loves You, and on and on. An army of cheap cyber imps. All of the masks that I hid behind. And I was relentlessly cruel, targeting the recently deceased, seeking out their Facebook tribute sites and dropping comments like this. <sighs> Did this whore really have over 10,000 friends? Or is that her client list? Or, I can't believe anyone's sorry that this slut is dead. Or in the case of a young suicide victim, I sure hope this dude is resting in piss. I'd laugh at some of the responses I'd get. It was like stamping on an anthill when you were a kid, and then standing back and watching all the ants come swarming out. <sighs> People get so freaking mad when you attack the dead. Like defending them makes up for all the times you weren't there for them when they were alive. <laughs> you can't understand how good it made me feel. Mm, to unleash so much rage, so much hatred. But it was never enough. I'd get Andy to hack Twitter accounts so I could use them to spew racist diatribes at other sites. <laughs> and of course Twitter would retaliate against the sites I'd hijacked, shutting them down and leaving me free to move on to the next account. I was like a virus. I was like a laboratory-bred pathogen. But it still wasn't enough. I'd go on eBay, secure the winning bid on a product, and then fail to pay for it. I'd give businesses a bad review just to lower their rating. Oh, it was like I drew strength from hurting people, even if they weren't aware I was the one doing the hurting. I was happy just so long as someone was having a worse day than me. And then, one day, it all caught up with me. Signing into my personal Facebook account about three weeks ago, I found a message waiting for me. Hey, Charlie. Can you see me? The message came from a user called Black Volga which was unusual, given that most Facebook accounts used actual names and not aliases. The message was accompanied by a blurred photo. I studied the photo for ages, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Eventually, I copied and pasted it to PaintShop, magnifying, shrinking, rotating, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't make out what the picture was about. Can you see me, Charlie? It didn't matter what account I was using, what name I was using. Every time I made a comment, this black Volga person would turn up and type the same shit right beneath it. Hey, Charlie, can you see me, man? And each message came with another blurred photo. Only each time, the photo was a little less blurred. I started... To panic. Someone knew who I was. That had to be a troll's worst nightmare, to lose their anonymity. I felt naked, like one of those dreams you have when you're standing in a public place and you realize you don't have a stitch on. I called Andy up. Apart from Sarah, he was the only friend I had, and, like myself, Andy was a dedicated troll. We'd met in an online chat room. Both of us trolling the same girl. Some black chick who proved to be an easy target on account of how fucking sensitive she was. Sometimes Andy and I hunted together, tracking down what we like to call feebs. People with feeble minds and a delicate disposition. <laughs> I think
think someone's stalking me, I said as soon as Andy answered the phone. They know all my accounts, and they know my fucking name. I mean, how the fuck do they find out my name? Are they threatening you? Andy asked. No, not yet, I said. But I'm pretty sure they will. Why else would they bother contacting me? Blackmail? Andy suggested. I frowned. You think? There was a pause, and then Andy said, Sure, they would have reported you by now if they were legit. <laughs> Fucker probably thinks you're an easy paycheck. I swallowed hard. So, what do I do? Turn the tables, Andy said. I got this friend, Black Hat, one of the best. If anyone can find your stalker, he can. I sent Andy screenshots of my account pages, and he said he'd get back to me. I spoke to Sarah after that. Sarah had a cold and she spoke in a nasal tone, like her nose was clogged up. She wasn't a hardcore troll like me and Andy. She was just a very confrontational person, very argumentative, and would wind up getting into a lot of online drama. She'd gotten kicked off a whole slew of social networking sites, and it was Andy who was always finding a loophole to get her back on again. Andy looked out for Sarah. Andy was a good man. When Sarah heard about my stalker, she said maybe I should cease all activity on the net. She didn't like the sound of this guy. She didn't like the fact he knew so much about me. I told her Andy had a black hat friend who was going to find out who this guy was. <laughs> I tried to sound tough. I tried to sound like we had this covered, but Sarah kept insisting I lie low for a while. She sounded scared, so I asked her whether she knew more than she was letting on. She said the name of my stalker, Black Volga, sounded familiar for some reason, like maybe she'd heard it somewhere before. <laughs> I laughed. I told her she worried too much. I told her to take some vitamins and it would help with her cold. I ignored Sarah's advice. I know it was meant in good faith, but I couldn't just go cold turkey. I couldn't suddenly stop trolling. <laughs> that was like asking a heroin addict to stop using. I'd recently taken umbrage to this woman on YouTube. Her name was Sixteen Sweet and she'd posted a video in which she'd laid out reasons why she believed the Earth was flat, <laughs> which, as far as I was concerned, was a red flag to a bull. I loved all these fringe theorists. They were so fucking easy to provoke. And so I started posting a lot of insulting comments on her vid, trying to get a reaction from her. She blocked me from her YouTube channel, but I continued to attack her on Twitter and Facebook where I found out her name was Danielle West, from Yorkshire in England. I used a variety of accounts so it looked like a whole mob of people were attacking her, and I got Andy to attack her as well because he had so many accounts he gave the impression an entire army was coming after you. Me and Andy like to play a very specific game. If we can make it look as though a person is getting a shitload of online hate, then other trolls will start jumping on the bandwagon. See? Trolls are a lot like sharks. They can smell blood in the water, and when they hear a victim thrashing about in desperation, they get excited, and they start moving in for the kill. We call this the tipping point, and it marks the particular moment a private vendetta becomes a public lynching. That's what happened to Danielle West, aka Sixteen Sweet. At first, it was just Andy and me laying into her, calling her things like fucking wacko and brain-dead cunt. But after a couple of weeks of this, the whole thing blew up. I shit you not, it was like a feeding frenzy at the zoo. Suddenly, every wannabe troll was laying into the bitch. <sighs> it was a beautiful sight to behold. Like composing a poem that suddenly becomes a number one hit song. She took her life a few weeks ago. Sometimes the pressure will do that to a person. That was the holy grail of trolling. To force someone to commit suicide. 
I was freaking ecstatic. I was floating on air for days on end, and in the world of trolls I had now been elevated to elite status. I had scored my first kill. But I wasn't finished with her yet. That night I went on Danielle's Facebook page. It had been turned into a memorial page by her mum, and there were videos of candle-lit vigils, and images of wreaths and stone angels, and commiserations and inspirational quotes by the truckload. And of course, I pulled down my digital pants and took a well-aimed dump all over the page. The flat earthers go to flat hell when they flatline, I wrote from one account. Whilst from another account I wrote, So glad this bitch put us all out of our misery. After that I sat back with my mug of coffee and waited for the shit to fly. A moment later a message appeared right beneath my comment. I leaned forward and squinted as I read it. Hey, Charlie. Missed you, man. Hope you missed me. The message was accompanied by a blurred photo. The sender was black, vulgar. I jerked back in my seat and let out a wheezing gasp, my heart trip-hammering as I stared at the screen. Who the hell? Who the hell? Who the fucking hell? How did they know me? How did they know my name? What did they want? I felt violated. I felt like puking. I felt as though someone was poking my guts with a hot sausage skewer. I clicked on the name. Black Volga. I was taken to his Facebook page, with no content and a single black and white photo of an old-fashioned black limo. I went back to the page I'd been using and studied the photo that had accompanied the message. I studied it until my eyes felt like they were going to pop out of my head. It still didn't make any sense. Who the fuck was this guy? A new message popped up. It said, Can you see me, Charlie? The message was accompanied by yet another blurred photo. Who's that? I typed. Someone who really likes what you do. I don't know you, I wrote, typing those words so hard I was in real danger of damaging my keyboard. Don't contact me again. I shut my Facebook page. A second later, my WhatsApp signaled that I had a message. I picked up my phone. The message said... But I know you, Charlie. I'm your biggest fan. I sat back. I was breathing hard, and I was officially shitting myself. After a while, I typed, If you keep contacting me, I'm going to report you. Okay, Charlie. By the way, I love your pink slippers, man. <laughs> Real trendy. I stared down at the slippers I was wearing. They were pink and fluffy. And that's when I started to panic hardcore. I was breathing like a herniated bull. How could he see me? The curtains were closed. How could this guy see me? Was this a prank? What the fuck kind of prank was this? Finger shaking, I typed. Who? The fuck is this? There was no response. Who's there? Nothing. Whoever it was had gone. It was a day later, and I had to give Andy's hacker friend remote access to my computer. I hated giving up control of my computer. Hated seeing this guy's prompter moving around my screen, like he was flashing his dick in my face. Dragging up files, collapsing windows, making things happen that I wasn't privy to. And it wasn't too long before I started getting seriously peeved. I called Andy. What's this guy doing? I demanded. 
He's going to track your stock. Andy sounded busy. Jesus, I said. You know, I'm not comfortable with this. I mean, I don't know this guy. He's a good man, Andy said. I only have your word for that. That's all you need. There's no other way? No other way, Andy confirmed. Fuck. <laughs> You're welcome. I kept getting the messages. Every time I used my computer, he was there, waiting for me. Charlie, aren't you going to troll anyone today? I really think you should troll someone today, Charlie. You're very good at it. What if it was the police? What if they were deliberately provoking me? Trying to build up enough evidence before they made their move. Charlie, can you see me yet? What if it was a prank? I'm your biggest fan, Charlie. You inspire me, you really do. God, what if it was a psycho? Talk to me, Charlie. I shut my computer down. My head hurt. I wanted to get out of the house, but I was trapped by my own innate terror of the outside world. I was full-blown agoraphobic by this time. I hadn't left the house in months, and the thought of stepping through the front door brought me out in a cold sweat. I was convinced that if I left this house... I'd never find my way back again. The internet was my window to the outside world, and now I felt threatened by it. The only thing that brought me comfort had been compromised. I started sobbing. Why me? Why the fuck did it have to be me? The next day, Caleb, and his hacker friend, called me on Skype and said... He has sunshine eyes. I'd forgotten I even had a Skype account, and the sound of it startled me. Hello? Who is this? I demanded. It was some skinny guy with blonde stubble on his head and huge bug eyes. I thought for a moment it was Black Volga, and my heart missed an essential beat. There was no caller ID, and that made me think this guy was some kind of hacker. <laughs> I was right on that score. I'm Caleb, he said in a low, weird voice. And his friend. I'm the guy who's trying to find your stalker. I frowned. The guy sounded like he was on drugs. Uh, okay. Have you found him yet? I asked. Caleb leaned forward, staring straight into the camera with those fucked up eyes of his. He doesn't want to be found, Charlie, he said. Not yet. Not till he's ready. I didn't like the way he was staring at me. What the hell are you talking about? I demanded. And how the fuck did you get my Skype number? He's got eyes, man. They can see right through you, like black light. Are you on trucks? Caleb kept staring at me. He lives inside out, he whispered. Sees right through us, like God Almighty. He cracked a wide grin that creeped the hell out of me. His eyes were windows into madness. I don't want to die, Charlie, he said and hung up. I stared at the screen. Slow. Fingers of dread were working their way up my spine. What the fuck was wrong with him? I called up Andy, but he wasn't answering his phone, so I sent Sarah a private message on her Facebook. Hey. It took a while to get a response. Charlie? Yeah, I wrote. How's it going? There was a long pause before Sarah's message came back to me. He sees through us, Charlie, she wrote. He sees our every sin. It's been four days, and I can't get in touch with Andy. His phone rings and rings, 
and no one picks up. All his accounts have gone dark. Zero activity. I'm scared. Every time I go online, there's more of those messages from Black Volga waiting for me. They are everywhere, flooding my accounts, my email inbox. Can you see me, Charlie? You inspire me, bro. I swear to God, man. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. Can you see me yet? I can see you. He wasn't lying. Whenever I went in my house, I could feel his eyes following me. That creepy sensation you get when you know you're being watched. Oh, I'm going mad. I haven't taken a shower in days. I've barely eaten. I've sealed the windows, blockaded the doors. I'm walking from room to room and up and down the stairs, and I'm constantly checking over my shoulder because I can't shake the feeling something's creeping up on me. I've even stopped trolling. Do you know how hard that is? And he's dead. I'll quote Google News, shall I? Andrew Harris, a 43-year-old computer programmer in Wilson, Pennsylvania, was found murdered last night in his midtown apartment. His landlord discovered him sitting at his bedroom desk. He'd been hit from behind with a heavy instrument, probably a hammer. Well, that's as far as I got. I can't read the rest. And he's dead. I keep calling him. I think maybe if I call long enough and hard enough, he'll pick up. But he never does. I switch on my computer for the first time in five days. On my Facebook page, I type, What do you want? The answer is not long in coming. I troll the flesh. Black Volga types back. You killed Andy, didn't you? I just want to reach into you and eat your pain, Charlie. Can I come around? We'll talk. I promise we'll just talk. You and me, okay? Is that cool with you? Can I come around, Charlie? Leave me alone. Please. What the fuck did I ever do to you? You heard me, Charlie. I died and you cut me open, and made me die all over again. But that's okay, I forgive you. I know you didn't mean it. Can you hear me? Can you love me, Charlie? The way I love you, man. <laughs> Go away! I was sobbing, typing those words over and over again. Go away, go away, go away. <laughs> there was no response for a long time. I sat, staring at my screen. I couldn't tear my eyes away. And at last, a message appeared. Hey, I'm in your kitchen, Charlie. I think you've run out of sugar. A crash came from downstairs. My heart gave an enormous spasm, like a hand had just reached into my chest and squeezed as hard as possible. I leapt to my feet and stood, glaring at the door. Couldn't move. I was horrified. At last, I rushed downstairs, baseball bat in my hands, a strangled scream issuing from my throat. The kitchen was a mess. There was shit scattered all over the floor, and the back door was swinging on its hinges, letting in a cold blast of wind. I closed and bolted the door, and searched every room in the house, but there was no one there. At last, I returned to my bedroom. There was a message on the screen. I visited Sarah tonight. I was... Trying, man. I was trying so fucking hard to express myself. 
You know, the way you express yourself, Charlie. To just let it flow. To tell her how I felt about her. Well, I guess I had all of this shit to get off my chest. And things went wrong, and I'm so fucking sorry. I can't tell you how fucking sorry I am. The monster was coming for me. I knew it in my heart. All that rage I'd let loose upon the world, all that black hatred, it had become sentient somehow. It had taken human form, and it was coming back home to its master. I called the police, but they weren't interested. I screamed at them. I told them that someone was trying to kill me, but you know what the cop said? You know what the dirty little fucker said? <laughs> we all die sometime. Yeah, my fucking tax dollars at work. Jesus Christ. Sarah's dead. She died the same way Andy dies. Blunt forced trauma to the back of the skull. They found her sitting at her desk. Like she'd been waiting to die. Like she knew what was coming. I'm all alone. God forgive me. Charlie, I'm coming around tonight. I'm coming to eat your pain, brother. I'm coming to wolf it down. I'm sorry, I typed. I'm so fucking sorry for everything I've done. I don't want to die. Please don't kill me. Please, 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 please. I love you, Charlie. Put the kettle on for me, man. I'm coming over. A strangled scream was wrenched from my throat as I got up from my desk and then staggered sideways and collapsed against the wall of the bedroom. I must have blacked out. When I woke up, it was dark outside. I scrambled to my feet. I was leaving. I was getting out of here. I didn't care where I went. It was all relative. I couldn't stay here any longer, waiting to die like the others. But the instant I slipped out of my bedroom, I knew it was too late. I stared at the staircase. A voice whispered up from the darkness below. Charlie, I'm here. I staggered back into my room and slammed the door shut. Footsteps coming up the stairs, getting louder the closer they came. I was wheezing, heart booming against my chest, blood pounding against my temple. A knock at the door. Let me in, Charlie. I'm home. I'm sitting here now, writing my final confession. It's sitting in the corner, waiting for me to finish, and then it's going to kill me, just the way it killed the other. It doesn't have a face. Jesus help me. It doesn't have a face. Just eyes that stare and stare. And I don't want to die. Please don't let me die. Please, please. Ha <laughs> ha you see, I told you. You've got a strong feeling about this guy, haven't you? Yeah, go on. Vent your anger. Tell me all about what you think. Just desserts? Or a sad ending to a guy who didn't really deserve it? Let me know what you think about this story. And of course, as always, I'll do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. Now, if you like this one, I've got something even better lined up for Wednesday. One of the scariest stories I've ever read. So, that means you've got to join me again soon, okay? Until then, you have a good evening. Bye-bye.
thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>